Hi everyone. So today we're going to be looking at the IGCSE periodic trends, including group one, alkali metals, and group seven, halogens. So let's start looking at group one. So you may or may not know that group one metals are called alkali metals. And this is the group we have lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. So we're going to look at some specific trends between this group, including the physical properties and the ca chemical properties. So let's start by looking at the physical properties. There are three main trends which you need to know, which would be the melting boiling point, density, and the softness, and how they change going down the group. But first, let's look, let's, so first, some general things about the group one metals is that compared to other metals, alkali metals are softer, they can be cut with a knife, they have lower melting boiling points, and a lower density. And then this is very important. All group one elements have one valence electron, as you can see. And they can lose this electron to form an ion with a positive charge. So now let's look into these trends, as I mentioned before. So down the group, the charge of a group one cation remains the same. However, the size of the metal cation increases. Therefore, the charge density decreases. So there's a weaker electrostatic force of attraction as you move down the group. Therefore, the melting point and boiling point decrease. The density increases. And the softness also increases. The main key thing to, me to mention here is that the electrostatic force of attraction becomes weaker as you move down the group. So now we're going to look at the chemical properties, and the main one is reactivity. So reactivity is how easily the group 1 metal loses its one valence electron. The more reactive, the easier it loses its valence electron. So down the group, the reactivity increases. So why is that? Down group 1, the number of shells occupied, occupied by electrons increases, and the distance between the nucleus and the valence electron increases. The electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus and valence electron decreases. So therefore, the valence electron is lost more easily, so reactivity increases. So this is really important that you remember these four properties. These ones are the physical, and then we have the chemical property, and you remember how they change down the group. The next thing we're going to look at in terms of group one is the reaction. So the main reaction is with water. So group one metal, it's also important to remember that group one elements are stored in paraffin oil to avoid um, coming into contact with other substances that they may react vigorously with, such as water, or oxygen. So react... Um, so the, re the reaction with water is very vigorous and it forms alkaline solutions. So a metal hydroxide solution is formed when we react with water. So these are some properties you should definitely remember which happen in the reaction. So when lithium and water reacts, you have effervescence and it floats on the surface. For sodium, there's effervescence, it melts into a ball and it moves quicker. And then for potassium, it burns with a lilac flame. So as you can see moving down, the reactions become more and more vigorous. Then we also have for um, for rubidium and cesium, what happens is that the reactions are very, very dangerous and they react explosively. So this is what the reaction would look like. You have water and you have an alkali metal and it will react like this. So this is the equation that you'll find for the reaction. So you'll have your alkali metal plus water gives an alkali metal hydroxide plus hydrogen. For example, we could have lithium metal plus water gives you lithium hydroxide plus hydrogen. And then now just Yeah, so this is the equation you'll find for the alkali metals and water reaction. So that's it for group one. Now let's move on to the group seven metals, a uh, group seven halogens. So the group seven halogens include uh, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine, and tennessee. 
So let's start with the physical properties again. So as you can see, these are physical properties. Melting point, boiling point, and then density. So what happens here is that the melting point and boiling point actually increase down the group. And then our density increases. So what happens here is that as you move down the group, it becomes more difficult for the for the um, atom to gain an electron because as we know here that um, for the group seven they f um, gain an electron to form a they get an electron to form a negative a halide and then as the atoms get bigger the attraction is less the electrostatic force of attraction is less so it's harder to gain an electron so the melting point and boiling point increase down the group and then as molecules get bigger, the strength increases, so it's harder to break apart. So then, now we're also going to look at the chemical properties, which is, again, reactivity. So the reactivity in group 7 is that, um, down group 7, the number of shells occupied by the electrons increases. So the nuclear force of attraction experienced by the incoming electron decreases, Due to the increasing distance between the nucleus and valence shell, it's less, it's harder to gain an electron, so the reactivity decreases. Another thing you do need to know for the group seven is the different colors, which are, the the colors which are formed. So over here, um, in natural state, fluorine is a pale yellow gas. Chlorine is a yellow-green gas, bromine is a red-brown liquid, and iodine is a gray-purple solid. And then in aqueous state, pale yellow, um, chlorine is pale yellow, bromine is orange, and iodine is yellow-brown, and fluorine doesn't exist in an aqueous state. And the last thing we're going to look at is the displacement reaction. Displacement reaction makes basically means that a more reactive halogen can displace a less reactive uh, halogen from its compound. So this is one example that bromine can displace chlorine from its compound. Um, chlorine can displace bromine from its compound because, as we can see, chlorine is more reactive than bromine, and since the reactivity decreases down the group, this is some examples. So fluorine can, fluorine can displace chlorine. Chlorine can displace bromine. Bromine can displace iodine, and etc. So that's all we're gonna look at today in terms of periodic trends. Thank you for listening.